What's up and welcome to another edition of the Cover 2 Recap. I'm BruinSportsport.com publisher Edward Lewis. As always, this is Ryan Karchi, the UCLA beat writer for the OC Register. We're here tonight once again at CSU San Bernardino for the last night of full pads contact UCLA fall camp practice. Um, and Ryan, I'm thankful it's finally over, but it's been a long day. <laughs> one more day to go. Uh, but first and foremost, the news and notes from, from day 10. Uh, a lot of injury updates today, and a lot of it is good news for UCLA. Starting with Devin Lucian, uh, Jim Mora said he looks to be fine. He passed concussion tests test today and he'll, he'll probably be back by next Monday at the at the soonest but sometime next week. Zach Whitley also kind of ran today for the first time since suffering a concussion. He looks like he'll be back next week. Scott Quisenberry was deemed to have a minor concussion. Jim Morris said we might see him back next Monday. Marcus Rios returned from a headache kind of migraine issue. Uh, he didn't really practice a whole lot but he was out there running around. Jake Brendel was out there looking a little more loose with his knee and stuff so he, he looks to be back pretty soon here as well. A lot of guys just coming back from, from big time injuries. Randall Goforth was back in a red jersey. Mossy Johnson ditched a red jersey today. So a lot of guys getting healthy at the right time. Uh, you know, it's been a long camp and a, and a long grind, but it looks like they're finally getting healthy heading into Westwood. Now, Ryan, we've covered a lot of things on the cover two recap. A lot of top performers, a lot of surprises of camp, a lot of uh, position battles, all this stuff. Tomorrow we're going to have all the MVPs of camp, you know, wrapping that up. But tonight we need to talk about guys that necessarily have not lived up to our high expectations for them. So, Ryan, give me a couple guys that uh, you've, you've kind of seen out at camp that you wish you saw a little bit more from this camp? The, the first guy I think of is Kenny Orgioki. Just for the, for the simple purpose that, you know, he looked like the clear-cut favorite to take that outside linebacker job from Anthony Barr. He had the same sort of freakish athleticism. He had the, you know, pass rushing acumen. You could see the potential for him to really become a pass, pass rushing terror. But for some reason, it hasn't all necessarily materialized. You know, he kind of seems like he's stuck between these the hybrid sort of tweener linebacker roles. Sometimes he's not necessarily the run stopper that Aaron Wallace is, but he's also not necessarily the pass rusher that Deion Hollins is. So he kind of finds himself in the middle. And you know, for a guy who obviously had pretty heavy competition, uh, you know, I was I was hoping to see a little bit more out of him. He he's definitely a guy that's still going to get some playing time. Jeff Ulbrich said that said as much tonight. Uh, he still has all the all the capabilities to really step up and be that freakish athlete. But we haven't necessarily seen it yet. Also worth mentioning that I think he's only 20 years old still. So if that tells you, or 19, if that tells you. Uh, Anything, I think he's got some time left in him. And, you know, the other guy, an another guy who I think has been passed up on the depth chart is Isaako Savainea. Um, you know, obviously he had the experience last year. He looked pretty good, I thought, uh, later in the year, filling in for Eric Kendricks. Um, that game experience is pretty invaluable. I think when you get into a camp setting like this, you already kind of know the ropes. And I, I haven't necessarily seen that sort of experience out of him. He didn't necessarily pop to me at middle linebacker, especially not in the way that, you know, say Kenny Young did. And Kenny Young came in as a freshman with no experience. So I think, you know, whether that's, you know, Kenny Young's high ceiling that's kind of showing and, and overshadowing, you know, Isa Akos, at this point, I don't think we've necessarily seen enough from him, you know, enough improvement to really prove that he can step into that second inside linebacker position. At this point, I think he's definitely in the rotation, but you know, as far as that experience goes, maybe that's more of a game thing. We'll see that then. But as of right now, I think Kenny Young's kind of passed him, and I think it's a bit of a disappointment for Savannah. Even Jalen Brown may have, you know, leapfrogged him in the depth chart, which is something I don't think any of us foresaw last year. But my two guys will start with Ellis McCarthy. Uh, you know, he's been injured, so it's hard to really evaluate his play. But Jim Moore basically said he's been injured because he's overweight. And, and for, I know it's, it's, you know, it's hard for him to lose weight. He's obviously came in, you know, heavy and he's stayed heavy. But when we talked to Kaimi Fairburn today and he said, you know, I put on, what, 20 pounds? He went from 165 to 185 just working with Sal Osi, and he's the kicker. You know, why, why is this, you know, hard for a defensive lineman to, to lose the weight when a kicker's putting on 25 pounds? So, you know, I mean, it's a tough line to walk, but he's a guy that they're counting on. He's a guy that, that you know, we all heard was maybe an NFL bound player after this year, a three and done kind of player. He's a five star kind of guy. At some point, he's got to get that body right, got to stop being injured, and got to start playing and, and producing for this team. So I wish I'd seen a little bit more of him, and hopefully we see more of him when he's healthy next week in Westwood. The last guy is Craig Lee, had a monster spring. We were talking about him. I think he made our top five in our cover two recap top performers. 
And then he kind of just faded away this camp. Uh, I, he had a few runs and obviously nice bursts, and he's obviously one of the most electric players on the field. But his blocking wasn't really there, and his and his vision in the hole wasn't really there. And I think Adarius Pickett has actually leapfrogged him in the in the depth chart. And Adarius has only been on this you know running back roster for a couple days. So Craig's another guy I think we need to see a little bit more from next week and a little bit more as we go into the season, just kind of figuring out vision and kind of working on everything, getting better at the running back spot at this level. Let's move into top performers tonight. Uh, a little bit less of the disappointments and a little bit more of the, the guys we were surprised to see tonight. Who uh, were two guys that stood out to you at this two-a-day tonight? You know, I was really excited to see Mossy Johnson kind of take off that red jersey and start to go full contact because he looked so good in the spring that, you know, you, we only had the highest of hopes for him, and he hasn't really gotten a chance to prove it. You know, the first few days he was out of that red jersey, he looked kind of tentative. Uh, he dropped a few balls. Tonight, I, didn't, I don't think I saw him drop one ball. Uh, I, I think the st same thing kind of still applies from when he was a top performer in the spring is that, you know, this guy is much better than we thought he was. The potential just seems to keep growing. And I, at this point, I think you add more reps and you kind of get him into that position where obviously I think, you know, if Thomas Duarte is out any, a little bit longer, I think he, he's kind of on the way back. But both of those guys are going to play. And at this point, I think Mossy has definitely earned a role on this team where I think we have to see him, you know, in the fall. But at, tonight, he was definitely one of the guys that popped to me. Uh, you know, one guy we haven't talked about at all, and I think it's kind of a shame that we haven't because he's been, you know, solid and people are just raving about him all camp, is Kenny Clark. And it's hard to notice him. I mean, we're watching everything out there. It's hard to notice the nose tackle. Uh, he's getting double teamed every time. I know we talked to Jake Brendel about him before uh, Jake went down, and he just said, you know, he's fierce every single play. He's gotten stronger. He's gotten more physical. And if you stop and take a second to really watch him, you can see that. I mean, his hands are more violent. I think you know, working with Angus McClure has definitely helped a lot of guys in that regard, but definitely Kenny Clark and you know Angus and Jeff Ulbrich were you know both kind of pointing out how much he's improved and how tough he is. He's kind of, I know Jeff kind of said he's the tough center of this defense, and I think today he definitely proved that. My, my guy, starting with Darius Pickett, I mean, every single day this guy gets better at running back spot, and today I think was maybe his best day. He had a couple runs at the goal line and red zone drills where he just plowed through the line of scrimmage and scored touchdowns. He had a couple other runs where he hit the hole hard, and then in the secondary he danced around, made Isaac Savai an A miss in the hole, and just was gone. I mean, he's having a killer camp moving to running back. And I think, you know, you and I talked about this on the practice field. It might not be far-fetched to think he's the third best running back on this team behind Jordan James and, and Paul Perkins. And that's crazy to think about a guy who was not only a high school senior last year, but who was a cornerback for being recruited as a cornerback. So he's having a heck of a camp since moving to running back. My other guys – Kind of cheated here uh, because they both were top performers on the cover two recap in the last couple of days. But Anthony Jefferson, once again at cornerback, was was just a monster. I mean, Elders Massington has been Brett Hundley's go-to guy. And ever since Jefferson moved to that corner spot in the nickel defense, Massington's kind of disappeared. So he's having a whale of a camp. And then Jordan James. Uh, we've mentioned him a couple times on this on this cover two recap. But today his blocking was incredible in one-on-ones. No linebacker can beat him. And that includes Eric Hendricks, you know, fifth-year guy and – NFL guy, and he, he, he's just stymied by Jordan James every time. And he also had a couple great runs, you know, in the hole, and his elusiveness and his speed is, is showing, and he's coming back to form after that injury last year. I think it's definitely worth mentioning on Anthony Jefferson that, you know, we asked, you know, Jeff Ulbrich and Jim Mora about him playing corner, and they were, bo they were both kind of, you know, reserved about it. They, I don't know if, I mean, you can read that in several different ways. Maybe they, they just want to move him there to get reps, kind of like Jim Mora said, or they just like having that versatility because at some point they're definitely going to move him there. Um, so you can read between the lines there a little bit, but I agree. I think he definitely looks better at corner. That'll do it for our coverage of day 10 at UCLA Fall Camp. As always, you can follow Ryan's coverage of UCLA on Twitter at Ryan underscore Karchi. You can follow me on Twitter at Edward Lewis BSR. Until the next time, thanks for tuning in to the Cover 2 Recap.